Welcome to Regenerative Journey. One of my goals with this channel is to capture the specific practices taking place on the farm that help to rebuild soil health and build soil fertility. And I want to share that with everyone out there already farming or aspiring to be a farmer to hope that you guys can implement some of these regenerative agriculture practices. So I hope you get something out of this video. Enjoy. So this is a soil builder mixed with a veggie cover crop, which is specifically to go in, in a, where you've been growing veggies and rejuvenate the soil because veggies have a tendency to take a lot out. So we had um, row crops between these avocado trees last year. Again, because of the lack of rain, you can see some stuff is doing well. This is the radish that's in here for breaking up the soil. Not that our soil needs much breaking up because there's so much rocks in it. But um, you can see that the field peas and, and other stuff is just barely coming up. Here's a piece of wheat. There's some sort of arasica or kale that's in here. It's a bunch of different stuff. But right now, because of the lack of rain, really all I can see is the radishes and the field peas are just starting to come up in the last couple, couple of days. Most vegetables are heavy nitrogen feeders. And so you want to rest your crops with stuff that's going to give... Um, nitrogen back to the soil and you want to inoculate it um, so you get the particular microorganisms that are going to build that uh, nitrogen in the soil. And so what we'll do here is then we'll run the laminator across. So not only are we rebuilding with root and microorganisms, we're going to then have it get eaten by the sheep and they'll be dropping their pee and poop, which is super high in nitrogen. And then what we'll do is we'll come pour some compost on top, whether it be worm or um, windrow compost on top, one more little row. We won't till it, we won't do anything like that. And then at that point we'll replant our veggies. And so that's how we are managing the no-till here. Ideally, you want to follow these guys with the goats because they're a little bit of a picky eater. Uh, once they run through a row, it will look like this. And then add organic matter to the top here. Uh, this is a mixture of horse poop and wood chips. And then this is going to sit here for a little while. We may put landscape fabric to make sure that weeds don't come up. So they will cover this, let it heat up, compost down a little bit. And then as soon as we're past the first frost date, we'll uh, put in, we, we have a no-till seed drill. We'll drive right down here with two passes and put the corn into the ground. Always what you want to be thinking about is how long can I let the soil be still? And how long can I let the microorganisms build up? And in pastures, that can be forever, right? In orchards, that can be forever. You People do what they call disc, which is to till between the rows to kill weeds. I don't understand. It takes the same amount of time to mow. Plant a perennial grass and mow to drive through a disc and they're going to say, well, no, because then you have to weed whack. But you still have to weed whack when you're disking and then other people spray Roundup so they don't have to weed whack around the trees. But we don't have to weed whack around the trees if you take a look over here. We put deep mulch around the trees. And so one guy will spend a little bit of time to pull up a few things that poke through the deep mulch, but it's not hard at all because it's just in the mulch. And so this barrier of wood chips is essentially stopping uh, weeds from coming up. And if weeds are not hurting my trees and weeds are not hurting my crops, I'm not even that anti-weed. If it's good food for the animals and it does, it's not invasive and it has a deep root system, it's drawing down carbon, like, I'm not really mad at it, you know? I'm not, I'm okay with it. But this idea that we need to have this clean dirt underneath our orchards, I don't know where it came from, but it's not logical. And for whatever you're saving in water in the summertime by not watering your cover crops, you're losing that same water in the wintertime when the water just runs off. 
Uh, you know, we've gotten more than two inches of rain in the last 24 hours. But the only place that you're going to see standing water or puddles is in the roads where it's compacted. Everywhere else, the water is going into the ground. So my 20 acres is doing a lot more for putting water down into our aquifer than the next 20 acres. This cover crop is the first year we're trying it. It's called a Southwest Desert cover crop that we also added wheat into because we had so much uh, wheat. The local bakery in town gave us a couple pallets of wheat that got bugs in it. So we added wheat to a lot of our cover crops for more uh, forage for the animals. And it's supposed to be 11 different things. And mostly I can, can only see a couple of the grasses and a few other things coming up. But mind you, we haven't had rain since November, and so um, we'll see in the next couple weeks here. But it's supposed to be perennial, it's supposed to be desert tolerant, and it's supposed to be good forage for animals. And so we're hoping that this grass stays here indefinitely. We don't have to do anything with it but let the animals run through uh, and eat it. Um, the sheep will be in here, those special little sheep, the baby dolls, will be in here to eat the bottoms of the hop vines um, after May so that they can uh, focus on the vines that are growing up and not growing extra shoots around. And so they will also eat this um, cover crop. And the goal would be to not have to reseed this all the time. So we'll see, this is a desert blend perennial. This mix is not specifically about the hop yard, it's about the longevity of the hops are 25 year crops. So there's a perennial grass mix uh, with a deep roots because it's for desert. So um, we wanted something that in the summertime we could only water maybe once a month one, um, and still have cover crop for the animals. And so that's what this is advertising that it does. I'm not sure. This is our first year doing it. Um, last year we did a more traditional, you know, uh, field peas and vetch and like a bit it was a beautiful cover crop but it just died back and then there was nothing um, that we could keep watering through the summer so we switched over in most places to this southwest specifically it's a southwest desert perennial cover crop so the baby doll sheep are a very short squat statured sheep and they can come in here and as the hop vines start to grow up these uh, when they get like this tall they still continue to grow out shoots on the ground, but really you want the plant to put all its energy to growing up and making the hops flowers all the way up. And so once the, there's like this, the sheep are only 24 inches tall. And so they're used specifically in vineyards. They're used specifically in um, hop yards. That's their main uh, use. And what we'll do is it's easy to use the temporary fencing to move them through here back and forth. Um, and so we'll holistically graze them through and holistically graze them back through. And, uh, you know, we have about 20 rows or something. So if you move them every day, then that's like a 20 day rotation. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you wanna hear more stories about regenerative agriculture, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any comments about this particular video, let me hear them below. I want to learn more from you about what you want to see and what you want to hear in the future. Thanks.